Hey there, and welcome to After Hours here at Linda's Electric Quilters. Um, I am over at the machine frame tonight instead of having our normal introduction um, over with the quilts. I decided let's just jump right into it. We're going to be uh, working on big text again tonight, and I'm going to be looking at doing some free, mer free motion, motion, <laughs> free motion ruler work um, around the letters to help these pop a little bit for the Texas Star Ferris wheel. And then I also want to show you uh, my trick for those of you that have computerized machines, and it might also be a cool trick for those of you that use pantographs, um, to continue doing the background quilting into these little sections. Um, so we're going to put the belts back on and do a little bit of that as well. Um, if you are watching us on Facebook, please make sure you like and follow our page. If you are watching us on YouTube, please subscribe to our channel and give this video a big thumbs up. I ran to the back of the machine real quick because I forgot to take off the belts to do free motion. So bear with me a second. Let us know where you're watching from in the comments. Ray is behind the camera looking at the comments so he can let me know. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in below. I'll try to narrate as much as I can during this. Um, like my little impromptu one the other day, uh, I just kind of quilted and then you ask questions and I went along with it as we did. Um, so I'm going to be using Mono Poly again for this to go around. That's a nice thin, thin, thin uh, monofilament. I did have a bunch of questions about needle size. Um, last week I talked about using either a 4.0 or a 3.5 which should be an 18 or a 16 needle for the monopoly. And I have bottom line in the bobbin underneath. I've got my ruler base on, and we are going to be doing... I want, I want these to really pop. We're going to do 14 stitches per inch on this one. So we are going to start with our... taking a single stitch to pull up our bobbin thread. And I'm going to get a zoom in on, you, on the camera in just a second so you can get a little bit of a closer view. Give me just a moment. We're going to tie off. And I'm doing about six or seven tie-offs here to really lock it down. And then I'll start with the needle in the down position. That's always the best way uh, when you're doing your free motion quilting. Always good to have it in that down position. There we go. Got my 4x8 ruler with the um, rubber grip uh, stickies on the back, the clear grip dots, which really help hold that in place when I am working on this. We're going to start it up, and we're doing the outline of these letters, turning it as we go. And one more stitch there. There we go. And these letters have a uh, natural shadowing behind it, the way that the, the lady who made the quilt, or group of ladies that made the quilt actually for this one. Um, so we really want to help accent that natural shadowing as well. So we're going to take a look at how to do that. So you've got the kind of the glittery T, and then you've got the solid uh, royal blue. So you're going to do a stitch in the ditch along the glitter, and then on your way back, you'll do a stitch in the ditch um, on the outside along that royal blue, and that's going to help give the illusion that these letters are more or less popping off as much as they can. So we're going to do that up the side on the glitter. Let's go one stitch over. There we go. Anytime you feel like the machine or your ruler is getting away from you, it never hurts just to pause the machine. That's why we have that start-stop button. Pause it. Give yourself a break, and then get back going again. So we did the ditch work around the uh, blue glitter. Now we're going to travel and do the work around the outside of the royal blue. And like I did last week, I will take the camera off and give you a closer view um, once I get closer done with the thing. Um, it's, I know it's harder to see the full product um, when you're using clear thread on camera, but it looks super duper cool having that uh, wool underneath in between those two layers of stitching, even though they're really tight, gave it an extra poof and now it's really popping. To give the bottom of the T that extra dimension, um, we're going to go over it one more time 
across uh, underneath the bottom here, not really over it, but underneath the bottom here just to really lock it down. We already went by once when we did the glitter, but now we're gonna go right back by it again to really make it pop. We'll tie off. And we'll do one more set of tie offs. Okay, and then we're gonna pull up our thread. Um, I did get a couple of phone calls in regards to using monofilament thread. So while I'm tying off, I thought I'd talk about it. Um, you do have to loosen your top tension a little bit. This thread is a hundred weight, which is super duper thin. And then with it being a polyester monofilament, um, it just, it has a tendency, it can, if your tension is really, really tight, it can break. That's just the nature of really, really thin thread. So you wanna loosen up your top tension. But when you do that, you have to remember that tension is a two person game, basically. So if the top and bottom are not pulling evenly, you're not gonna get that nice stitch. So if you really loosen up the top, you're gonna have to tighten up your bobbin just a hair to get that stitch to still level out correctly. So always remember, if you make any tension adjustments, you've got to do it both ways, both top and bottom. And grip dots on the bottom, and then we're gonna move over to the E. Let me give you a little bit of a camera change. There we go. So I've done that uh, path apply uh, blanket stitch around every railing of the Ferris wheel. And if you can see, you might be able to, on these short narrow ones, it made it look like actual rails were built into it because those path apply stitches, I made them touch when they did that blanket stitch, which gave it a really, really cool effect. So we're just turning our ruler as we go. Do have a ruler base on this. Anytime you're doing ruler work, you definitely want to have a base on this. Flipping and going. But you can see, once you really get the hang of the ruler and your start and stop, you can fly through ruler work really, really fast, which is super duper fun. And then why I, I am doing that, Ray, do you have any questions? I have a question for you. What's up, my dude? Uh, the first one is, what size needle would you use? Um, great question. Uh, so the, I don't know if you heard it, but the question was, um, what size needle would I use with Mono Poly? Um, it varies. I like a, a, a 4.0 or a size 18. Um, right now I'm using a size 16 just to do a little bit of smaller um, holes. And the reason I switched to that, oh, great topic. Um, the reason I switched to that is because some of the fabrics, the way they are um, heat set on to the fusing mechanism that's on here, when I stitched through it with a four needle, it made um, a little bit of a larger pop hole, which means I'm gonna have to go through with some water and some heat to close it up. The th switching to the 3.5, it hasn't made as large of a hole, um, so I decided to switch to a 3.5 this week um, to, to uh, attack it, and I've done that for background quilting and for um, the uh, monopoly as well. What's up? Is this a panel or a Ah, good question. Um, so the question was, is this a panel or a piece top? This is actually a um, raw edge applique um, quilt top that was put together um, by the Quilt Asylum for the All Texas Shop Hop. Um, and so you can see some of the threads are raw edged on there. That's why I'm stitching them down. Um, if it was a panel, that'd be really, really cool. Uh, but no, all raw edged, all, I think they use steam seam I could be wrong because uh, I wasn't there during the creation of it. Um, but it's all steamed down, and then I went through and locked it all down with blanket stitches and with regular straight line stitches. And next question, will they get a sneak peek of the full panel? Um, sneak peek of the full panel. You might get a bit and piece of it. Um, when I get done, I might do tiny little bits and pieces photos, but you won't get a full 
photo of it and tell the official reveal, um, which will be at the Quilt Asylum. And I think hopefully I'll be able to be there for it. Um, and we'll make sure that's live so you can watch it as well with all of us. Any tips for monopoly for setting the tension correctly? Is that what you said? Okay. Um, what I would recommend doing before you get started when it comes to seeing if your tension is going to be right, I would put a very, very bright, almost atrocious bright thread in the bobbin. Again, probably a bottom line or a so fine, but I would put that in the bobbin. Um, and I would test, always test out if you're trying a new thread like monofilament, micro quilter bottom line, anything like that. Um, you definitely always want to test when you're going from using a normal Tex 30, Tex 40. Um, but I would have a side piece of fabric. I would have a really, really, really bright color in the bobbin that you can really tell is noticeable, maybe a neon pink or an orange. And I would stitch with that and do some sharp pointy lines, maybe like ruler work to zig, uh, angular lines and look at your top. If you can see those little dots from the bobbin thread underneath, that means either your bobbin's too loose or your top tension's too tight. And if you just switch to monopoly, I guarantee you the top tension's too tight. So I would rail that back until you can barely see every now and then little dots of the bottom uh, thread that you're using. Um, so if I got really, really close when I first started this, You'll, you might see maybe three or four little dots of the gray from the underneath. And if you barely see any dot, that knows where you need to be um, with your tension really well for that monofilament. You can double check your bobbin, but your bobbin's normally pretty set uh, most of the time once you get your top figured out. Awesome. That's it for round one. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So we're going to keep going through this. Remembering that we're doing the blue first because that's the foreground of this. And then we'll come the sparkly blue. That's the foreground of this. And then we will do the royal blue on the way back. Um, another question that I get since we brought up steam a same a second ago. Um, another question that I get sometimes is stitching through steam a seam. It can cause you to have skip stitches, and that's because of um, how like com sometimes thick and gunky um, that that steam a seam is. If you're having that issue, I would switch to a uh, titanium needle, which is a light ball point, which kind of glides through the steam a seam just a little bit more. Um, and doesn't cause the needle to gunk up as bad. If it's still giving you a problem, we sell a product called Eza Thread that I use on all of my cotton threads when I'm quilting, which puts moisture and life back into the thread. But I actually will kind of make sure my needle is up and I will put some Eza Thread on my needle, kind of um, like a, it's a, it's a silicone lubricant that goes on the thread normally, but I can put it on my needle and that just helps go through whatever you need to go through. And that will fix 99.9% .9 of my skip stitch issues that I get when I do any type of interfacing on the back um, that gums up the needle. I've had to do it on this once or twice. Um, now it's not a permanent solution because of course that, that, um, the liquid will come off after going through the uh, fabric so many times. So you just have to, you know, maybe douse a piece of batting in that Eza thread and then kind of run it up and down the needle every now and then. But whenever you're doing like a t-shirt quilt or something like that, normally you have no idea what's on the back of the t-shirts when they fused them, if they fused them. Um, and so that can really, really help out to, to alleviate the, the skip stitch problem as much as it can. Oh, yeah. Again, doing those tie-offs, make sure you move a little bit every single time you do a tie-off. Um, that way the uh, machine has the option to actually make a proper stitch. If you stay in the same hole, um, it's not going to work out to do a proper tie-off for you. 
getting close to being done with the Texas, and then we can look at some background quilting. I'll switch threads back and we can hop over to background. <laughs> What's up, Ray? First question is, mm -hmm. did, the guild, did the guild tell you how to quilt, or do you have free reign? Question, oh, okay, so question was, did the, uh, the, the group that made this quilt top, did they tell me how, to, how they want it quilted, or did I have free reign? Um, really good question. Um, it's kind of a mixture, actually. So when it was brought to me, I asked, which I, I always do if I'm ever commissioned to do a quilt top of this nature, and I normally don't, I guess I should say this too, I normally don't quilt for the public. Um, I like to quilt for myself or for classes or for y'all online, um, but mom scored me this job. Thanks, mom. Holla. Shout out. Um, when she was doing her own little tiny shop hop around, she, she saw them working on this. Um, anyway, but... Um, she, the only thing that they asked was on the quilt, I'll zoom out real quick so you can see it, on this part where the quilt is going to, oh, do y'all want to see the quilt? Okay, I'm going to show you. They brought it to me the other day, so I can put it on. It's Big Texas first quilt, and then they hand embroidered stuff about him on it. When he was born, his weight, how high he was. Or how tall he was, not how high he was, how tall he was. Um, but the only request was when the quilt is hanging here, if I could make the stitching on this section simulate what is on the baby quilt itself. Um, that was the only request. The rest of it, she said, have free reign, do whatever you want. Um, I love watching you online, and I think you'll be able to do um, it justice and make it look really, really good. That was a really drawn out answer, but um, I wanted you to have full context of it. So yeah, they kind of just let me do whatever I want. They only had one um, request, really. I did not blanket stitch down the letters. Um, good question. I didn't blanket stitch down the letters. I'm just doing a straight line stitch. The blanket stitch would have taken the illusion away from the letters themselves. Um, because they're so small, it would have ended up looking like the railing um, between the, the Ferris wheel itself. And I didn't want that illusion to happen. I uploaded this in my uh, computerized quilting software, and I applied a blanket stitch to it first in um, the picture of it in the software. And it just looked raggedy, I guess. I don't know what the proper way to say it is. It didn't look the way I wanted it to look. So doing that straight line stitch really kept the natural order of how the letters looked and really had them pop in the proper way uh, that I wanted it to look like. Okay. Keep the questions coming. It doesn't have to be uh, questions just related to big text. Um, you can ask any quilting questions and while I'm working on him I am more than happy to answer them if I can. So for this one, which was real quick, um, I did just a hop, uh, a quick hop over. I tied off real quick and then hopped over um, just because I didn't want to have to trim the thread. So I'll go back and trim that top later um, as well as trim the backing later once I'm done with it. So I could hop in and get into the inside of the A. Alrighty, almost done with the Texas part. And then we will get into background. So while you're tying off, I have one more question. What's up? Are you stitching down the letters now as you go? What was that question? Are you stitching down letters now? As you oh, go? gotcha. Okay. Um, question was, so am I stitching the letters down as I go? Um, so yes, I am stitching them down as I'm working through the quilt. Um, I normally work through the quilt from top to bottom. I try not to roll up unfinished quilt into the roller bar just because I've had bad experiences with that. Don't want to go back down that path. Um, so I'm just stitching around and down these letters as I go. And they do have a fusing mechanism on them. Um, so once I get this off, I'm going to refuse them down just to hold them completely. Um, but they are being stitched as well. 
Oh no, I do not need to use a straight line ruler with that. I don't know what I was doing. Let me grab a different ruler real quick. What ruler are you looking for? I got my applique is fine. Oh, okay. Thank you. Just need a little bit of a curvature to it. applique helper because it has curved edges for the curvy sections and then if I need a quick straight line um, it's got a good straight line section as well on the other side. Oh, how okay. I'm with you now. Sorry, I had to look at I, the way you the. I know what you, I knew what you were saying. It didn't register. Yeah, I love the Ferris. So I think it's really really cool. Even the little buckets that are around. I stitched those uh, earlier today. Okay, so we did the Texas part. Oh, compliments. I need or not compliments. I need suggestions or maybe I just want to prove my mom right. Probably that way. So I they brought me in this uh, Texas flag to go um, in the center of the Ferris wheel, which is where it is on the um, Ferris wheel today at, in Fair Park. So the flag naturally has a dome because it domes out because uh, it's like kind of that center piece of that Ferris wheel. So I didn't want to stitch down the lines or even the star because I wanted it to pop out naturally like the dome. But let's take a poll. Do you think I should stitch down the lines to make more of that flag structure? Um, or should I let it pop out like the dome like it naturally does at the fair? On the actual Ferris wheel. While those suggestions are rolling in, I'm going to put my belts back on the machine because we're going to be doing some um, computerized work for the background to get, show you how I do that. So I will clip these in real quick. Love how fast it is to put the belts on my machine. And just pop right in. And they come right off easily too when you need to. And then we're going to switch out our thread. I'm switching from mono poly to affinity. Affinity is made um, by uh, Philtech Habendash, uh, the same company that makes Glide. And this Affinity is a variegated, which is a very, very nice, subtle variegated. It smoothly goes into the next color, which is really, really good. I didn't want a nice stark variegated um, because I didn't want it to be like the showstopper of the quilt. The showstopper is obviously big text um, and the applique piece. Uh, I really didn't want the starkness of the thread to take away from anything going on on the quilt. But if you get really close with it, it does have just a very subtle tone on tone change. And I'm just pulling the thread through. I tied it on the back to the monopoly and I just slowly pulled it through the entire thing, even through the needle. Um, now I know for the way I set up my machine, one full turn back on my tension knob was what I needed to go to monopoly. So to get my stitch looking right again for my background quilting, I'm going to go one full turn tightening it up. You can hear it go click, click, click. And now we're back to that right tension setting. So I could bounce between the two um, whenever you're working on it. Alrighty. You doing good, Ray? I'm doing great. Awesome. Love to hear that. Okay. So now what we're going to do is do this background quilting 
in these individual pieces, which is going to be fun. So give me just a second. Let me get it set up while we're looking at everything. Can zoom out so you can kind of see what's going on all the way around the quilt. Do, do, do. While you're setting up, do you have time for a question? I do have a time for a question. What do you have in the bobbin right now? Uh, in the bobbin right now, I'm using bottom line, and I'm doing that both for the monopoly and for the affinity um, thread. I'm keep, I kept the same thread on the back the entire time. Uh -huh. Okay, cool. Let me. I'm almost done. Sorry. Perfect. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back to my 12 stitches per inch because that's what I'm using for the background. And then I will hop into my computerized mode so I can start mapping uh, my points. So we will start with multiple pieces in this. We're going to go ahead and do, I can map out a few of these. Turn on my laser. I've got to move my handle down so I can get access to the button that I need. But what I'm going to do is I've already done this background quilting and it is currently on my screen. Let me give you a visual of what that looks like. So this is what was done earlier for that side. So that's already sitting there, already quilted. Nothing's really been changed that much on that. So I am going to take my machine and begin mapping points um, with a feature I have called push pins. Um, every machine's a little different. Some might call it a boundary point. Some might call it, uh, I think they call it marking tool. There's a few um, out there. But I'm just going to be dropping a few of my little push pins inside, barely inside of that um, seam line that's there. And I use that those air quotes since this is raw edged applique. But we're going to do a little bit here and there. And I do my points a little closer together, especially um, because this has so many twists and turns in it. I really want to watch that. Um, also, whenever you're doing anything like this, if this is a mask for, uh, for my machine, but um, anytime you're doing any type of movement on your machine, especially for a computerized, make sure you try not to lean on the belly bar um, or the bar that's holding anything. That can cause this to shift ever so slightly. And when you lean off of it and start to quilt, then your quilting isn't hitting exactly where you're wanting and you're thinking something's wrong with the machine when in all actuality, it actually moved just a hair because we were leaning on the bar. It's happened to me. I can't tell you how many times, so I just like to throw that out there. Um, another thing, I'm doing all of these right now because I've done so much stitch in the ditch um, and uh, background work already to really lock this down. There's not a whole lot more shrinkage that could happen. So I'm doing a few of these. Now, if I didn't have the um, railings here, blanket stitch down or stitch in the ditch down or anything like that, I would only do one of these at a time because shrinkage would pay a huge factor in what I'm doing and then would cause this not to look the way that I want it to. Mm, let's do, we can do one more. So we're just going to click around these. And we'll stop right there. Yeah, that's good. We'll stop right there. OK, so let me switch you over to the computer so you can take a look at what I'm doing. All right, so these were the three sections that I just got done working on. So what I'm going to do is I am taking one of my patterns that I've been using. I use the exact design size that Kim Diamond did when she designed this pattern. Uh, this pattern is by Kim Diamond of Sweet Dreams Quilt Studio. 
uh, she remapped it real quick for me so I could use it. So shout out to Kim, thank you. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm overlaying a repeat on top of what I've already stitched. So I kind of have to figure out where this is gonna line up. Do you see that lines directly up on top of something that I've already stitched? And I'm gonna go ahead and add additional repeats so you can see that it's going into the sections that I need it. I need one more row right underneath to fill in these other sections, but I know that I have to do this a couple of different times because I don't want these to stitch continuously through the railing to the next piece. So I might need a few extra copies of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a few copies of this and set this off to the side and I can come back and grab them later. I don't know how many I'm gonna need, but I'm just gonna grab a bunch. It never hurts to have a couple extra copies. Okay, so first things first is if I'm gonna start with these, for my machine, I have to unlock them. The little pieces that I just made, they're locked in so they don't move anywhere if I try to touch them. So I'm gonna unlock them real quick. And I'm going to select one of the pieces, even though there's patterns not over it, I'm just gonna select one of the pieces. And I'm gonna hop into my feature called mask and I'm going to build my region. And then I'll click on my next one, build my next one and build. So now I can begin to play with my masking feature. So this is another reason why we made a bunch of copies as well. So I can select one of these, I'll select this one and then the pattern, Ooh, no, not that pattern. There we go. Let's try this again. See, this happens to you at home too. Select one of these, select the pattern. There we go. I want to get rid of everything on the outside of this. So I'm going to mask the outside and accept. And then it's just going to do that one right there. And it looks like it naturally went right behind the Ferris wheel to complete the pattern. So I'm going to grab my other copy, lay it on top of that one that I just masked, because I know that's right. Get it right exactly where I want to. Make sure it's perfectly aligned. Select the region, select the pattern, and same thing, I wanna get rid of everything on the outside, so I'm gonna mask outside and accept. Looks like it's hiding right behind the actual design. So then I can go through and do this a bunch of different times with whatever I need it to. So this one will hop. Now we're gonna overlay it on this uh, stuff we've already quilted over here on the left. That's good, and that's gonna go through all of these. So I'm gonna have, oh, I have just enough copies, yeah. So we'll select, we already have the region selected. We can use that region. We already have the pattern selected. Mask outside, accept. And that's gonna place that one right there. Grab another one. Right there, overlay it using what you've already got available to you. We're gonna select the region, the pattern, and mask. And then grab our last one for this example. region, pattern, and mask. Just like that. So now you've got that natural flow of what the pattern really looks like if it went all the way across this edge to edge, but you've plopped it multiple times over what you've already stitched so you know it's going to hit and look exactly the way that you need it to. Um, and then you can go in there and make any type of edits, any type of cleanup that you wanna do. Like some of this stuff, I really don't think I need to stitch out like this first initial piece. There's not really a reason to stitch this line. So I could take this pattern, come in with my nodes. Oof, that's a lot of nodes, that's fun. Come into my delete points option and I can come in and clean this up and get rid of pieces that I really don't need to stitch because it would kind of be a waste. It doesn't need to stitch all the way up there. Right there is fine. Um, but I could click around and see any type of fixing that I need to do, I have that ability. Um, any type of an adjustments in my nodes that I wanna make, I can do that as well. 
click over to my next one. So like this accidentally, I, I overlaid it the wrong way. So it's going into it, which I don't want that at all. So I can lower this down, maybe delete a few of these nodes, lower this down a little bit more. Let's delete this one too. Delete this one. Now I'm getting to a point where I have a lot of straight lines and it doesn't look like a natural arc. So I have the ability to right click and add in an arc. And then make it naturally look the way it was supposed to. So those slight, slight adjustments um, you have that ability to do, um, or you can do, depending on what machine you have. But the big takeaway behind this um, was to do that natural background quilting behind it by overlaying what you've already done and then building it piece by piece to make it look the way you want it to. So now we get to see it quilt out. So I will zoom into this a little bit and we will start stitching it. As I'm working on this, Ray, do you have any questions for me? Uh, the only other question I have is, is there a video of how you did the blanket stitch? Um, there's not a video of how I did it. However, if you would like a video of it, I'm more than happy to make one. And what program are you using? Um, so this is the Autopilot um, for the Anova machines. Autopilot Mach 3 is what this one is. Sorry, I had to save what I was working on. Let me start this bad boy up. And it's gonna go off of hierarchy of how I kind of set this up. So it might do certain parts here, it might do certain parts there. And I also have an overstitch filter on. So if, it, if it's gonna do too many overstitches based on how the pattern's designed, then it will pause and go a different direction. But I always like to sit here close to it just in case any type of movement happens. It shouldn't because we were uh, careful when it comes to clicking our points. We didn't lean on the belly bar and we stayed a little bit outside of the um, edge, but you never know. It's always good just to double check. But that's gonna give you that really, really nice background quilting. And I have the machine slowed down just a little bit for these little small sections, just because I like to watch them. So this is a perfect example. Because of that overstitch filter, it recognized that it was gonna stitch over this, probably this basket too many times. Um, so it went ahead and stopped that, that mask there for me to pull up and then for it to move to its next section. So I will go ahead and pull up my thread and trim it away. because it's working off of how the pattern was initially designed. So if it has to travel back so many ways, oh, now it's coming over here. This is the fun thing about doing um, some, again, some, some um, machines call it mass, some call it fill, some call it crop. Sometimes you don't really know where it's headed, um, but we know on the screen that it looks right. So we trust the process. At least that's what I tell myself. These threads are gonna annoy me. I'm sorry, I'm pausing real quick. In the meantime, I think you answered this, but what is the name of the background design? Oh, no, I didn't answer that one. Um, good question. What's the name of the background design? So this one is called, this one's from Kim Diamond of Sweet Dreams Quilt Studio. It's called Storm. It's actually a really good question. I can look and see what it's called while it's working. Actually, let me just pause it and see. That has, um, Storm Cloud E to E 003. Storm Cloud E to E 003 with no cloud. It's just no cloud though. So Storm Cloud E to E 003, no cloud. Thank you. No problem. Kim has a huge um, catalog of patterns to choose from. Um, so feel free to, to jump over there. She's a really, really good designer too. Um, her patterns are encrypted though, so you have to have an encryption dongle for your machine. Not all machines have that, um, so make sure you, um, you, you look that up prior 
to getting your heart set on a pattern. But um, for the top portion of the, the uh, quilt, I did the storm cloud with the clouds. Um, and then this one she, re she redrew for me over the weekend. Again, shout out um, to Kim for doing that. So it wouldn't, uh, would not have a cloud underneath it because it would throw off the, the illusion of how tall Big Tex is. He's supposed to be standing in the clouds. But once these three um, are finished, then I will take the camera off, we'll bring you up, we'll look at the letters, and we'll look at um, how the background stitched out so you can get the idea. Um, and then at that point, I think we'll call it a night, and then I can see you tomorrow. This is going to be an all-weekend endeavor. We are finishing Big Tex this weekend. Um, so if you are around, make sure you're notified or subscribe to our pages. Um, that way you can get that notification whenever I go live randomly and start working on them. Did I get any input on the flag? Oh, you got quite a bit. Oh, I got quite a bit. All right, what's the input? Tell me. It's unanimous, do you wanna guess? If they say stitch through it. Did they say stitch through it? What'd they say? Nope, let it pop out. Let it's it pop unanimous. out. Woohoo! We won, folks. I just think it, I just, I like it. Mom has really good ideas. She really does. But there's some things, sometimes, Corey has good ideas too. <laughs> but I love my mommy. She the best. Wouldn't be here without her. Well, in multiple different ways. Obviously, I wouldn't be here, here. But I wouldn't be at the, the platform or the level of quilter that I am without her. She's always beside me. She's the best. Where am I going now? Oh, I totally forgot we did this one. I thought we did that. See? Just going with the flow. What's up, Ray? I heard you make the... I have a question noise. <laughs> you, you have a... I have a question noise. I just know it. What's up? You probably guessed me ask this question. Do you find that it's important to stay with the machine with both Oh, good, good question. So the question was, um, do I find it important um, to stay with the machine uh, while I'm doing fills to guide it? Um, I do. I like to stay right here because I am a control freak. I want to make sure it's going exactly where it needs to go every single time. Um, certain things I will walk away from, um, but it's very, very rare that I walk away from the machine while it's doing fills like this. Edge to edge quilting, oh, I'm walking away from it all day long. I don't need to be there for that. Um, but if it's doing any type of work like this where I have to really, really watch it, yeah, no. We gonna be sitting right here with the machine. Gonna pop some popcorn in the non-existent microwave. And we are just gonna chill. Gonna turn on some music. I tried to watch a movie one time while I was doing fill work. Didn't work out in my favor. Ended up watching the movie instead of quilting. And that's not good. Um, but it, yeah, it's always a, a big plus. To, oh, it even cheered us on. It said, congratulations. Ta-da, you did it. Um, I always like to stay with the machine. I totally drew out that answer as far as I could. <laughs> Golly. Ta-da. All right, so that's that portion for it. So I'm going to take the camera off real quick, so stay steady with me. And we will um, get a little, little bit of a closer view. So as you can see, those lines naturally glide through the background behind it because we did that little trick of kind of pacing the pattern over. But it looks like the wind is going behind the Ferris wheel. Um, by doing that. But if I get really, really close, I don't know if I can see it, but that little tight blanket stitch right there made it look like railing because I did it on both sides. Then you have your letters. Um, Ray, can you do me a favor and turn off the main lights, please? So I can get some shadowing. 
<gasps> Thank you. Oh, look at it. Oh, looks so good. I don't know if I'm going to give this back. Karen, I might be keeping this. I'm sorry. I feel like she'll send a mob after me, though. Big Texas. He's cool, but look at the the pop, the dimension that that gives just by doing the stitch in the ditch. I'm around those lettering and then doing that two-sided stitch in the ditch really made it look like that letter is literally just popping off and floating there. There's the dome. Look at it. He poofs. He's so cool. And then some more of that background quilting, which looks really, really nice. And then if I can get you close enough, get one over here. That affinity thread has a very, very light change of variegation, like super duper light. You can barely even tell right here, but it blends so nicely into this. And then I'm gonna move over here real quick. Same idea that I did between the quilt and big text. I just pasted a full row to match up with the row over here to fit into this section right here. I always wanna make it look like it's continuous as possible. Those puckers right there, don't worry about that. We're gonna get those out. That's just a little bit of heat, no big deal. So there it is. So that is the endeavor tonight here on After Hours. Make sure you follow the Big Texas, the Big Texas, the Big Tex Saga this weekend. Um, we're live tonight right now, and then we will be live Friday and maybe Saturday night, um, depending. But there we are. Thank you all so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And I will see you next time. Bye.